close to our heart. I'm very happy to have the presence of our celebrity and guest who's here with us. He has taken out some time for us. One special request, sir, is here with us. He is Mr. Adnan, etc. And much more to his profile. I just like to introduce you to us as celebrity and then we go deeper into the session. So I become very emotional when I meet somebody from Pakistan or from another country because they are so kind enough to take out the time to respect you, to respect people across the boundaries of their country and speak on important issues, on, cre on creating awareness with regard to health, with regard to social work, with regard to the environment. Don't you think they are all important people in our lives? Let us join together and welcome our celebrity today is Mr. Adnan Shah. Uh, for, uh, for giving me the opportunity to, to spread love, to spread peace, to talk about the humanity, the human values. Indeed, it's a pleasure site for me be, uh, being on the other part of the border to, to work beyond the borders. Uh, Pakistan and India, uh, I honestly believe when we are uh, school age children, we are, we are uh, listening to different stories. But honestly, at this stage of my life, I truly believe on the interconnectivity, on the culture hegemony between Pakistan and India. It's like both are indispensable. Uh, so I, I really value and feel honored to be on this platform. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much, sir. Same here from our side as well. Thank you very much for spreading peace and happiness. Thank you so much. That's really nice. I go ahead and share your profile and then we begin the session. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, friends, for being a part of our journey. And I should thank our celebrity and guests for taking out the time to be here. Let me introduce Sir once more in a very official way. It's a privilege and a honor as well to share the profiles of our celebrities and guests. And as we have Mr. Adnan, officer, as I earlier mentioned, he's also a lecturer in sociology. Uh, he's connected to the College of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation, CPMR, uh, Paraphlegic Center, Peshawar, Pakistan, at the University of Peshawar, Pakistan, Peshawar, Pakistan. This institution stands as a state-of-the-art facility, providing comprehensive physical rehabilitation services for individuals with spinal cord injuries, post-polio paralysis, and children with club food from across the country and nearby bordering areas. With a keen focus on child protection and child welfare, public policy, social welfare, gender justice, post-conflict intervention, disability, and social inclusion. Mr. Adnan brings a wealth of expertise to his work. He's very compassionate and very focused on bringing beautiful change in the society and transforming life. This is what makes him more unique. And I'm really happy that he's sharing the space today with us. We really love all the people to have the lovely heart, not only for their families, but for the people around them to understand the pain and suffering of others. He possesses extensive experience in supervising academic field work, practicum from BSW, uh, like if I could put that right, for Bachelor of Social Work students, Master of Social Work students, if I'm getting that right, BSW and MSW students, he's connected with the field work, uh, nurturing that professional growth. So that's wonderful. Here also, you can see that he is nurturing the younger ones to come up and to guide them in the right way to bloom in the right way. Now, Mr. Adnan's commitment to advancing research in social work is very evident through his publication record, which includes 11 research articles in the national and international journals. Notably, Adnan sir recently achieved certification in qualitative research methods through a live virtual program conducted by the Faculty of Social Work at the University of Calgary, Canada. This accomplishment underscores his commitment to enhancing his research skills and contributing to the advancement of social work in theory and practice as well, if I can put it right. His passion for helping others and his extensive experience in social work makes him stand out from the crowd. He is a perfect person today to speak with and share the stage and this platform. So let's give him a warm welcome and get to know more about his life journey. I'm really interested as to why Sir is so connected with the people suffering in pain. Putting your time and energy for the best of others makes you divine. Hello, Sir, and thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm really happy that you're here with us. Many of your friends, relatives, and people across India and the world would love to know from you like, how would you describe yourself? I have shared something from my end. When you are discussing my profile, I just uh, go back into my childhood and just memorizing how the things happen. 
I mean, they, the academic profile, their professional profile, their research contribution, other things, a lot of things come to my profile. So uh, helping people is something that we are ingrained in and with our culture and other local social culture values we have here in Pakistan. For instance, connecting with people in their miseries, in their uh, moments of happiness. So we are connected here. It's not about the social isolation that everybody is living in their own four wall of boundaries of home. We are connected in the funerals, in the uh, uh, in wedding, every moment. So that is something that that, that comes in genesis by birth. In, in this in this region, I, and same uh, I believe in the Indian region because we are we have that history of helping others. If if I go flashback to the schooling, so being a normal child. Um, I don't like regular schooling, carrying school bags and uh, doing homework and that, that that busy schedule, six to eight hours of daily schooling. I'm not I'm not okay with that stuff. Till I think it's it 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 gained the, the momentum during the, the middle, the seven eight class. That is something that that you start you started thinking about the things how metric metric or. Uh, college level, university level, and, and then 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 you plan your future pursuance. That what I will do in the future. So that is something that that, that my schooling uh, time is. Yes, but if uh, I reflect here, my the, my, my schooling era, I, I believe uh, in our part there is two dominant phenomena: the students of arts, the students of science. Science dominates the, the the market and the society and receive that privilege honor from the from the mainstream society that he, he or she the science student so i opted arts i received quite a lot of negative comments and sort of uh, rejection you are studying arts why you, you're not an intelligent student that's why you go for arts in the matrix state same then in the college it's the arts and the science computer science and engineering competition that is something that quite hurt me a lot I really feel that back. It's mean if I'm an art student in Pakistan, we use a specific term, green arts. It's mean a typical art. That you have no skill, then you pursue your own career. But yes, I gained the momentum from from the college. You will be involved in, uh, in different activities as a Pakistan during the nine, post 9/11. This region passes multiple natural disaster, military conflict due to its geopolitical importance. The U.S. invasion of Afghanistan that have direct impact on attached Peshawar. We are attached border with the Afghanistan. So that things connect in dots in my life. You know, observing the human miseries, the refugees, the internal displacement, the military operations. That thing where we start volunteering. Volunteering during my college time, the earthquake, uh, when we as a nation become united and start paying towards the people miseries. We conduct uh, blood camp, collecting cloth, something, winter stuff, non-food items, food items for the affected families. So that is something that that cultivate that that culture and that uh, sort of motivation in my in my life. Uh, when we complete my graduation, and we uh, there's a main decision of opting which degree during master in university. So I still remember the prospectus. If you observe everywhere, the prospectors are quite colorful. They have quite sophisticated and colorful pages and a sort of future forecasting things were right in there. When I joined Master in Social Work, the momentum gets flying from there. When, when we practically involved in the field work training, in psychiatry ward, in drug rehabilitation center, in children with uh, disabilities, so that's thing. That's thing furnishing my, my my conceptual clarity and my my future focus so that's basically the academic sort of surrounding that we uh, academic background of mine after completion uh, obviously there is a hunt for a job you when we are, when we are looking for a job as i mentioned after 9 11 invasion the social sector the ngo sector quite uh, quite dominate this region the international international community come forward to to support the Pakistani community. From there, I got an initial job in a local NGO where we work for the 
malnourished children, pregnant and lactating mothers, malnourished uh, health conditions. So that's that's thing quite uh, quite fascinates me more. It's like a direct helping. You are facilitating the client, receiving their good words, their prayers, and you feel the soul satisfaction. So from that first NGO job, as every human individual tendency that they're, they're trying for good to good for, for the career growth. From there, then I go towards child protection government job, UNICEF sponsor, where we connect with the children, children out of parental care, ch missing children, children with uh, sexual abuse, emotional abuse, mental challenges, out of school children, school dropout. So these things, they, they, they're putting air to my profile and they're putting strength my 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 professional skills and my aspiration to, to, to do social work, social services in, my, in this part of the region. Meanwhile, the internal displacement, military operation against militants, they displace families. Then we respond uh, with the formation of a gender and child cell to, to provide uh, inclusive holistic services. It's not only to being a patriarchal dominant society. We have a gender on the women's side almost surpassed the 50% the population in Pakistan at this day. So we uh, so we try to, to, to cover bo both sides. Even we, we establish a transgender cell. That is, that is not an easy game in this in, in this social cultural values. Uh, ch children, children and gender cell, transgender cell, disability cell. Because disability, persons with disability are often sort of kept sideline and secondary in, in emergency situation. So these things quite these things when I when I flash back and recall those memories, I almost feel quite satisfied and that's soul satisfaction when they remember those faces. They put forward their praise and faith and trust in, in our services. There's a lot of all, more things I can share, but it's up to you how you want to proceed with this. Yes, sir. it's very, very interesting. Very interesting. And see, there are many people who will not come into this field to you know, get to know the pain of others, to be an observant person, to understand the pain of others and to work towards reducing their pain. That's really nice. As you mentioned, as a student, you selected arts and there was like you know, some type of a negativity as to why you have taken arts. And I could relate to that because even I am an arts student, so I could understand mm -hmm. that. But yes, people who take up arts are more compassionate, I should say, more understanding. Agreed, agreed, agreed. Agree. During arts, when you give a smile, uh, I assume that might be ma'am or sorry, man, arts student. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, sir, you are into this field. Like, what kind of challenges do you face? You mentioned all the challenges faced uh, by other people around you. Now you are coming out and volunteering to help them and, you know, giving your time and energy for the betterment of these people around you. So what kind of challenges you face on an everyday basis? Uh, in, in, in our society, in, uh, uh, holistically in Pakistan region, after the U.S. invasion in Afghanistan, 9-11, Osama bin Laden episode, NGOs are perceived as a international spy agencies, international conspiracies as something against Pakistan, social cultural, religious values to malign the country at international arena. So uh, when I introduce myself, uh, Adnan, the social work, the future prospect in these social areas. So in my friend circle, the religious folks, I receive a lot of criticism. It's mean you are going to join the international conspiracy and you're trying to change the local, local social cultural values. You try try to sell the country amateur international platform. So these are very common sentences uh, I hear and I receive uh, on face-to-face -face meetup during our routine social life. Yes, the situation quite changed now. It's not at that time when people uh, blame the NGO, stigmatize it with. Yes, job hunt, for, for instance, if I discuss with for the aspirants, for the students, job hunt is a quite a big challenge in this part. I mean, limited opportunities. Uh, academic institutions are quite increasing day by day. The graduates are uh, coming in a bulk of numbers. Opportunities are limited. So the competition graph are always very high. To compete in that, being an art student. Yes, I keep the momentum. I keep the passion. Uh, 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 when you are submitting a cover letter and see your resume to someone, and you are writing something in your cover letter, I always try to say, to have some that 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 that, that catchy words. That at least at least the hiring agency just at least call me for interview. 
then I have the, the belief that what I have here, what I can speak, that that will obviously leave an impact, but at least just, just call us for an interview. And that things click, that things click in my life, that I got uh, recruited on multiple spare without any uh, sort of uh, reference or what we can say, uh, nepotism or favoritism. Thanks God, uh, I got always on a merit level, got hired for uh, government job opportunities. Still I'm working, it's a government body, Department of Health, uh, they are sponsoring this body. Uh, and this time we are, we are dealing with a person with a spinal cord injury and post polio paralysis, etc. This institute is basically established after Russia invasion in Afghanistan, 1979. It, it, it itself has a quite unique four, four decade history of this institute. It just uh, 13 to 14 years back, the provincial government and health department taken in its own custody. ICRC, International Committee of the Red Cross, they established at that time when during casualties, they bring up the wounded patient to, to the center. Yes, and, uh, apart from that, uh, I'm supervising the BSW and MSW students' fieldwork practicum. I enjoyed that stuff. Being a student, what challenges we faced, how the institute where we were placed for the clinical training, what areas they 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 not focus on the student. I remember those areas. So honestly, I'm, I'm working on that area when we receive a sort of no attention from the uh, agencies where we were placed for training. Uh, at least on my part, I honestly tried to know at least give the focus quality time to the students to train them on the client center approach, social case work, which is the main thematic area of the social work profession. And apart from my, from my teaching and sociology, I just enjoying, I love it. I think just uh, around about 30 minutes prior of this interview, I just completed my uh, class with a student of physical therapy and occupational therapy, sociology. So uh, today we discuss the ethics and medical sociology. So it's quite interesting things are going in, in my life in the professional perspective. That's really nice. Sir. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. That's very really nice and interesting. And now, sir, I'd like to know, like, what inspired you to come into this field? Like, you might have seen somebody in your life, like, who might have inspired you. Now, who is your inspiration? Today, you stand as an inspiration for all of us, like, being connected with teaching, being connected with social work and all of that. You're a wonderful inspiration. But people would love to know who inspired you or who is the main person or like as a role model or an inspirational figure in your life. No, honestly, uh, during uh, childhood, and I observed my father and my mother. They are quite, uh, I mean, they're, they're sort of a helping hand. They always put forward their right hand towards helping others. If it is in material shape, in financing, in non-food items or everything. I mean, uh, the, the way of life we are living here we are like a joint family. The neighborhood, we are quite connected in the routine daily care, in the routine utensils, accessories, things of your kitchens. Apart from that, uh, our social culture and religious belief is a card concept is here in, in, in our religion, which is that those who can afford, they can share their money, resources with those who are in need. But my father and my, fa and my mother, honestly speaking, still they are quite... Uh, uh, they play a big role in this. Even uh, if I honestly share the last weekend story. In our neighborhood, there a death of a child, a two-year child. It's basically a cerebral palsy child that you got died. Uh, my mother said, let's go visit them and meet them. Just, just give them a, a sort of relief. You can share your own counseling te techniques whatsoever. When I visited there, I was discussing with the lady so uh, my mother was sitting outside in in the in the in the premises. She just gave me a signal. I I can just put a signal here. Just gives the eyes contact and a signal. Okay, uh, better son, if you have something, so so please please help help her out. So what what resources I have at that time in my pocket, I just share with the lady. I feel really proud of that. That, that look at my mother is attending. The, the, the formal funeral e event, the closing. But during the, the uh, I believe there were around about 20 to 25 ladies. During that ladies, my mother took a side, just give me a signal and better know it, it's our time. At least we have some resources, so, so please distribute that. 
I really feel that very cherished blossom, such a kind soul hearted lady. She is leading the she is leading the game of our home. So these are the things that quite mm, strengthen the, the, this this culture, this phenomena to distribute. Yes, that's really nice. Thank you so much. And I could visualize that when you were sharing all of that, I could visualize that situation where your mom gave you that, you know, gesture and made you understand like you are important now to do something at that given time and you would really extend mm -hmm. your help. That's really nice. Now, sir, you have any beautiful childhood memories with your mom and dad or with connect connecting with people or in school? What kind of a child were you in school? Very studious one. Or very not naughty and notorious. What type of oh, school? School. I, I I always discuss that. I, I remain a very uh, child with a low confidence. Can't face the audience. Even have no courage to answer the teacher question. Instead of the answer was right. I always uh, discuss with my student that please, if you have anything here, just put forward. If it's wrong, that's fine. Uh, I, I I miss that part. I said that. Around about 80 to 85 percent questions raised by teachers in university, colleges, schools. I have the answer, but just lack that confidence. That confidence, if I answer it will be wrong, all the class fellow, they, they will start laughing. That fear, I, I, not rem I still remember that. That faces, that, that regret of uh, I have in my academic, that I need to answer. That is something. Huh? Yes, I go, uh, even in the college level, I remain a very, like a, a mama boy. Go to school, college, attend class, and just go back to home to, uh, to have your uh, lunch at proper time. Yes, we enjoy sport, football, cricket, when, uh, during the winter, early in the morning with heavy fog, all of our cousins get up. We, we, we don't have any priority about breakfast or luncheon and just go in the winter, in the summer, enjoy our cricket but yeah that's uh, academic part i i have the bad feeling the regret that why not i raise the question or i replied instead of knowing the answer that is something that really um hurt me yes i could again relate to that because i was also in the same space as you as a little kid the answer was right but i was scared of answering thinking that it might be mm -hmm. wrong suffering from uh, low self-confidence uh, you know that is even uh, you know, even prevalent even today, as you said, you're encouraging your really? students now to share the answer, no matter if it is right or wrong. You just share mm. the answer. That's really nice. Yes, really, exactly, exactly. So how we could relate very well, you know, uh, a human emotion. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. The same, yes. Exactly, exactly. And that, that is reflecting during when I'm uh, answering and I observe that honesty and that purity uh, in your reflection. So that is something that quite connected us. The same challenges in in childhood. The same feeling towards human ten, human uh, miseries. That is something I, I, I'm honestly speaking. I'm also enjoying it quite, and feeling in this discussion. Yes, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. So now let's talk about books. Are you a person who loves to read books? Because see, now you're connected to sociology. You might have done a lot of reading. What kind of books interests you, and which is the best book that you have read till date? <laughs> Okay, the thing is that during academic, I think you can understand that during academic, we are confined to that academic, uh, that syllabus to qualify with a good grades, good marks. Yes, I uh, just studied a few books, honestly speaking, studied just a few books. One written by Manto, Saad Hassan Manto, a renowned name. And another one is about the, the clinical psychologist. I love that book. I, I'm trying to recall the name. I don't know if you asked the question, so I put it at the name. But that book was quite amazing. It's about conscious and subconscious mind. Because we are doing with a, with a client-centered approach, uh, with a patient. So I'm doing my assessment, psychosocial assessment. That is quite help. That's quite helping me after reading that book. I, I will check it if I got the name, so I will obviously text you. But yeah. apart from this, uh, I'm not that much fond of uh, reading book. Yes, I I love storytelling in any shape, and face to face through media, media, mm, uh, stand up comedy, football. I'm crazy fan of uh, football, I'm playing cricket, and yes, I I enjoy social media, social gathering. Yes, 
now, sir, we go on with the next question. What role has, you know, friendship in your life? Like, what part has, I mean, let me put that all right. How have friends been in your life? Have they been very supportive? What is the role of friendship in your life? Because there are certain uh, friends who are very good in front of us and behind their backstabbers. So how has been your journey with regard to friendship in Pakistan and beyond Pakistan borders? Mm. And that's very question. When you rephrase it, it quite uh, enlightened my horizon. I think uh, I always found friends, they're, they're like pearls for me still. I have very, very limited friends. But yes, they are sincere. They are friends. When we can say in the local terminology, they are like my right hand. Yes, uh, they're beautiful. As they are looking beautiful, they have beautiful souls. They have beautiful minds. In, co uh, in the university, in my professional career, in international arena, I found very, very, very good individual. Such individuals that with, with whom when I talk, I feel the freshness post that discussion. And that freshness remain for a while. Still, I have uh, some uh, academic professional context in Canadian institutes. Honestly speaking, last week, uh, sorry, on Saturday, on Saturday, I receive an email from one of the professors. And that email response, till I feel that, that, that beauty, that purity, that feel. And similarly, my friends, during my MPhil research, and I just submitted my doctoral thesis for evaluation, I mentioned that friends, that they are, that they are like integral part in my business, in academic professional journey, with whom I can share my joy, my worries, with, uh, with, with whom I discuss my future forecasting, everything. Yes, that's really nice. Thank you so much for sharing. Now, sir, the world is changing at a very fast pace. You know, at a fast pace. Now, what kind of a change you'd love to see in the world? And where is, uh, where is that zone or which is that zone where you want to see a change in? Is it in the th thinking of the human mind or is it in collaboration? What space or what is that zone that requires a drastic change and the effort should be by one and all not only one or two people by one and all so that kind of a mass change should be there what is that mm -hmm. it's quite it's quite it needs a laborative quite uh, in depth and a few words i um, i really feel uh, for instance when when the literature used the word third world country for us i feel it's very bad what do you mean third world as the society stigmatizes some in a specific vulnerable population, so I, 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 I always feel bad for that. I uh, can I share my childhood story in this platform? Try to connect. Uh, transgender music events were quite happening when I was a school a college student at that time. Honestly speaking, I always feel bad for for the society response towards them. Just, just. Uh, Portraying them as a as a dancing, as a sexual toy, and I really feel bad. Though, what is this? Uh, at least respect humanity, and I really mean it. Till that I mean it. I'm discussing with my student that please, yeah, respect. It's not about transgender. Every every human being is precious. Forget about those religious beliefs, religious values, caste. I respect, madam. It's not about that madam uh, belongs to India, Pakistan, or Nepal, or Bangladesh, or US, or Canada. I respect that. And I believe on that beauty, honestly speaking. Yes, this, the surrounding society is quite divided on, on the basis of religion. In this part, and I believe in, uh, in sub, uh, I think this is a, it's a phenomenon of the su subcontinent. On the basis of religion, culture, social class. And I really feel bad for that. At least, yeah, we are we we are a human being, and every human being is precious. It is important, precious. So the, the third world country phenomena, that vulnerability on the basis of gender, and that is quite hurting me from the from the schooling age. And to, honestly speaking, today I discussed with my class students, that please forget this transgender uh, gender discrimination tagline. I respect each and every individual, and yes. In this region, subcontinent, I do what is clear. It's been in the childhood, you were taught, teach about Pakistan, India, and that 1947 history. It's come out from that history. We are living the present. 
just just share the respect on both borders beyond border and we're forward we're forward to have peace happiness prosperity on their side and this side around the world and yes that an uh, unequal distribution of resources is the word used the word for us and then develop part but that is something that yes i i feel i observe and uh, i want to have something to contribute there Excellent, sir. Excellent. Uh, you come across as a wonderful person, a progressive thinker with beautiful thoughts. Uh, you're focusing on humanity. You, uh, you're focusing on that. That's mm -hmm. the most important thing. Like we give respect to each other and one another. Like if somebody's with you, you respect that person right in front of you. If they are far away from different countries, different geographical locations, irrespective of class, caste, creed, religion, etc., you really are a very progressive person who have come across. That's really very nice and very interesting. And I wish all of us develop that. You know, uh, Agree. We more yeah. open, we become more accepting, we become more inclusive. You know, mm, that's really exactly very inclusive is exactly inclusive, the proper terminology. Thank you. Now, sir, what is the most proudest moment in your life till date? You've been a long time in this field. Like, where do you think you have done your very best? You're very proud of this accomplishment in your life. Mm -hmm. The multiple thing in the in the professional domain, I remember that when we uh, unified uh, children out of parental care with their parents, oh God, that that, that moment that, that that blossoms, that smile, that the tears in their eyes, I recall that moment on different occasion out of parental care children. Um, apart from that, uh, in this job, when we hand over a wheelchair to person with disability. He phrases the word, it's like my legs. This wheelchair will become a powerful tool for me to socially reintegrate into society, to support my family, to make earning routine, socially respected earning, not begging on the setting on the wheelchair and asking for arms. And those sentences I remember, I received a message from one of our clients. Thank you, Sergi. After your motivation session, I pursue my um, uh, my decision towards academic. I got a government job. I received that WhatsApp message and they just put that message on my my status. That that was quite uh, fascinating, amazing. During flood, during flood, when people have no nothing to eat, we arrange food items. That was quite uh, something uh, I'm recalling at this stage. During a SWAT operation, internally displaced population, we accommodate one family. I recall that 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 uh, smiley faces. I think a lot of uh, also most souls are also you can put that apart from that quite challenges also to the professional when we approach early child marriage case, and I receive like this signal. I will see you from the opposite side in the court. Child sexual abuse case in the local community. And the child father, I still remember, he seemed a quite respected human individual. And, and I, I still recall his his eyes, his face, when we meet up out of the office to, to have the fact and finding the report about child sexual abuse incident. And that father uh, raised a question, will, will we receive any justice? So... so multiple things uh, good memories and uh, challenging memories yes yes sir. thank you for sharing all of that and you know you're giving a very clear explanation of all the experiences that you've had and how you're facing the challenges how you're overcoming all of that that's really nice now sir i'd like to ask you your favorite quote or quotation what is very close to your heart like we all have this good morning messages coming or quotations being passed on from one a friend to another or in different groups which is that one which is very close to your heart and this is quite exactly we are sharing multiple quotes and putting that on our insta stories or i don't know but, but i can add the word that uh it's from our own religious beliefs about it's about human human respect human respect i, I honestly believe strong, have strong belief on that and another word about aristotle man is a social animal we, we, we can't live in a, in, in a, in a jungle in a social isolation. We all are connected. 
beyond the border far away either it's a third world country either it's a developing underdeveloping developed part we all are socially connected for instance we recall the covid 19 first episode when the laws were strictly implemented I, I discussed with my students and my peer groups that we were fed up from watching web series, Netflix, Amazon, all of these things. Stuff. Uh, for instance, I received salary on a time. Our offices were closed, shut down. We were uh, enjoying a holiday at home. But after some time, we get fed up. What is this? No social gathering, no social connectivity. So uh, that's why I, uh, I love the managed social animal phenomena. That, that, that we are connected in this world. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, sir, how would you want to be remembered in the world? How should people remember Mr. Adnan Sh Ashraf? If I'm putting that right. Now, because yes, one exactly. fine day, we all have to leave this world and uh, you know go. So what is it that you want people to remember about you? But this is quite... Uh sort of challenging question for me. The thing is, that instead of you did everything, the society has two poles. The people call you with the good names and there are evil interpretation are there. They have interpretive lens to recall you with the bad names. You can't make the entire globe happy. But yes, your soul, your family, your parents, they feel proud of you. They're satisfied with, with what you did. I think that is something that is our primary group. Our primary social group is our family. Uh, I believe their, their eyes reflect that, yes, we, we did fine work. Or we did not a fine work. If they are satisfied, and yes, my soul is satisfied that I did a fabulous job. I did a satisfactory role toward the society. That uh, I think that is something we need internal, internal evaluation, first of all apart from the societal recognition or societal applause. So if uh, my inner soul is satisfied, that is something. But and another thing is that every human being have tendency to, to be known and recall as a, as a good human being. So the same is with me, because I, I'm also a social animal, part of the system. So nobody wants a bad name to, to, to be uh, recalled as, as a bad son or daughter. But just my, my, my father said, I'm proud of you, Adnan. That is something that I always cherish. Yes, at least I'm doing it a bit good. That's really nice to hear. That's wonderful. So that's really nice. It's a good sentence. I'm proud of you, Adnan. That really feels Thank good you. on top of the world Thank when you. our parents say that to us. Yes, dear. Now, sir, there are many people who have lost the path of understanding the meaning of life. They have fallen into depression or they are suffering from anxiety and stress or some type of mental pressure. They feel that life is a waste. What is the message from you to all of them who have lost it here? Mm, that's the point. Uh, the social work degree, my professional training, professional job, and still what we are doing with our uh, passion of disability, psychosocial support. We all need at some stage of our life psychosocial support because we are not angels. Everybody needs something, the, the helping hand and the soothing effect but the thing is that uh, the problem comes here there are persuading factors and the main persuading factor is social friends family relations loved one care one for instance job environment social challenges people 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 behavior boss behavior supervisor behavior so that behavior all things fall under the umbrella of social and being an individual, I also remain uh, sort of a victim of these multiple stages and different layers of life. But then how to cope, how to, to, to way forward, to put forward, to combat that area, that is something that needs guidance. This region, we are quite lacking on the on the uh, multiple phenomena like MHPSS, mental health, psychosocial support. It's a very fresh emerging topic in this region. But this region needs it. I think globally, we all need MHPSS concept, mental health, psychosocial support. Uh, for instance, by approaching a psychologist and psychiatrist, there's a big social stigma in this part. I believe it might be internationally or don't. People are stigmatizing you. 
you have some mental issues. So that is another problem. But the thing is that your loved one, the, the person who knows, who you trust, just take your hands and we'll start it and discuss it. Another thing, what I observe in the, this challenge, mental health challenge, is people don't discuss it. It's like ruining, uh, disturbing you, killing you inside. For instance, I have the face that is that is visible. A man is perceiving the face I have. But what is going on here, inside, that is something that, that needs to come out. There's a phenomenon of catharsis. I call it supplied. Just put forward what you have here. Put that in on the tray. At least talk, talk, talk. For instance, parents, there's a generation gap also. This, uh, the elder, older generation, they complaining about this younger generation. The younger generation, they are not uh, okay with, with the old, elder generation. They are 1950, 60 eras. 1950, 60 eras saying the 2024 youth are not there to that we, what we have. So generation gap also there. But the thing is that there's a need to, to set up, to have a quality time between a partner, partner, a loved one, friends and family, peers, to discuss, to at least say something, what is the problem? Then, then try to find out the solution. But I believe what I observed during my professional career, that the problem are, majority time problems are very teeny and very little way to resolve it. But due to, no, due to the known availability of the environment of sharing, that is something that is very, uh, it's like a silent epidemic. People are not discussing things. And that's why they're, they're opting for the society or other harmful activities. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for explaining that. You put it very well and very clearly with lots of clarity. Now, sir, if there may be several people out there, several youngsters out there, or anyone who would love to become a social welfare officer, now, how would you guide them in the right way? What are the main things that they have to focus on first in order to become just like you? I think uh, I strongly believe that every human body have a human hurt it, kind hurt. Everybody. I strongly believe on this sentence. The things that the social environment that put uh, that contribute a lot. The bad social memories, the bad social history that make a, that, that, that make you a hostile individual towards humanity towards human, towards a specific gender, just because of his or her social history. So uh, I strongly believe on that. I honestly speak that that you might have a very kind heart from me. It's not about that I, I, I take in the portfolio as social welfare officer, so I have the best kind heart and the other society in the world has no kind heart. Yes, I, I, I come across quite a lot, long challenges of job hunt, of, a, of career growth. But yes, I keep the momentum. During that momentum, uh, a lot of time, I uh, I quite get dissatisfied with the system, with the, the concept of meritocracy, with, with the people who don't give you the opportunity, but I keep the momentum. When I, when I feel down, I take a rest. I shut down the computer, laptop, put off, switch off the mobile, focus on that area, which gives me which, which, which relaxes me. Either sports, entertainment, music, a comedy, walk, uh, out session, hilly area, journey, whatsoever. I give time to that. Just refresh from here. Again, open the laptop, mobile, and just start it. And still these things are going. Sometimes I feel quite, it's like flying. Now I'm going to do this, this, this. Sometimes I feel down. And the life is like this. It's going between the mediocre. But the, uh, again, the question is that how individual discuss it with self, with close one, and then put, put way forward to deal with it. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you for sharing all of that. You made it very clear for us with regard to your experiences. You put forth how one could take on their career as well and go forward, be ready to face all the ups and downs and learn to de-stress at the right time with the right kind of tools. Now, sir, with regard to criticism, when 
then people face criticism. You know, they do, are not able to take themselves forward and go. We all do face criticisms. If we do good or bad, the world will speak about us no matter what we do. So like, how would you guide the younger generation to face the criticism that they face today at a much larger, you know, I mean, we have the online bullying going on. We have a lot of, you know, media coverage going on. Like people are, you know, criticized n number of ways. So what is the message that you'd love to give them? How to face criticism? Because we've all been facing it. We've been overcoming those challenges as well. With, from your experience, if you could share how can one over, tide over it. Well, very interesting. When I, when I put, when I received an uh, invitation from the International Pep Talks, when we finalize it, that yes, uh, I'm now going to go on Monday to discuss it. So I get that, let's put it on my Facebook. I share my, my Facebook account. Uh, my university friend, a Slovak university friend, I received starting comments. Uh, good luck, sir. Good luck, Adnan. Best wishes. Yes, keep the momentum. One of my close friends, he put some comments, critique, taunting. So I just simply open, delete. He sharply observed it. And he just put me a private message in a messenger and rephrase his, his tone. That yes, I, I didn't want to do this. It's your personal profile. So I need to at least criticize or taunt you. That it, it better that I put a uh, private message to you. I just uh, send him a smiley. It's okay, fine, no issue. So I think it's an indirect social message for him. That, no, brother. This is not acceptable. In the proper socialized way. No, nobody, other nobody knows. I honestly share it with you at this platform. Apart from this, if I share in my region, uh, Criticism got quite a lot of momentum in this part. Political criticism. That has other uh, causative factors in this region. But yes, the tolerance phenomenon is quite on the decline. People are not going to tolerate the, the criticism on the religious base, on the political base. That's quite dominant in this part. On my part, if uh, apart from this uh, Facebook example, if someone criticizes me on my face, face to face, that is very rare. People obviously criticize you on the back, not on the on, on your front. When you hear something of, of uh, that that individual say this and that, so they just give you a smile and just put forward. Just listen, trash, listen, trash. I think that's a quite a good relaxing technique. If you listen. Keep it here, then it start making making uh, making you more disturbed, and that has it toward that individual. That's why we have in our culture and religious religious beliefs. Then then when someone said you that that individual commenting after you this, don't follow, don't trust that individual blindly. Reconfirm it, and majority time. After reconfirmation, the sentences was not that when the messenger shared the message. That is very common. Thank you. Thank Smile, you. listen and trash. Listen, trash. Yes, I really like this. You know, listen and trash. And it's a big takeaway for me and for our team as well. Yes, right. it's really nice. So when you get negative criticism and when people don't like what you're doing, what you're doing, and you know that you're doing the right thing, the world knows that you're doing the right thing, but there are a few people who may criticize you either in front of your face or behind you. Just listen from one ear and trash it out from the other. That's a very simple mm -hmm. technique. And as you said, don't put it there. It says that it really creates a lot of stress. That's mm -hmm. really wonderful, sir. Now, sir, before we sum up the session for today, I'd like you to give a wonderful message from Pakistan to all the countries in the world. What is the message that you would love to share with each one of us on the Fab Talks? I, 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 honestly speaking, I I really mean these sentences that I'm using the words that I strongly believe on the harmony on the basis of a religion. Every religion, I don't care about the religious belief. It's about that individual belief and his or her God. Everybody is a Muslim, non I don't know. Gender justice, yes. Being a patriarchal society, we have the male dominance. 
I can recently add an example. We were just, I mean, just part of a transforming masculinity study conducted by the University of Calgary. It was conducted in Pakistan also, where we interview male, the role of male towards to raise wives for female. Being a father, father raise a wife for daughter. So the, the, the male is a man, man part of in the society for gender justice. So I believe on the love, peace, the, the fragrance of humanity. We, we, we people respect, not on the basis of the show on the shoulder, everybody has his or her social status. As the police or other portfolio, they have their own shoulder position, SP or whatsoever. I believe on the individual with his or her own identity, with his human beauty, respect each other, spread love, and yes, listen, respond in a positive way, and don't create this, this, this division in the society. I, I really feel it. Yes, that's really a wonderful message from you. That's really nice. You're focusing on humanity, on how to build human connection and how to network with the right kind of people. You're a very progressive person, sir. I was like thinking, what are we going to discuss today on the platform? I never knew actually what we'll be discussing. It goes with the flow. And so you've been a very genuine person with no filters. You have a lot of transparency. And what you kept on focusing on is treat each other, treat one another with respect. And, you know be inclusive and spread love you know focus on the fragrance as you mentioned or the essence of humanity and spread universal peace and justice i really like the way you presented yourself you know you it speaks volumes of a person that you are the upbringing that you've had and the progressive Thanks. thoughts that you have that's really really wonderful we look forward to having you once more on this platform we need people like you sure. to empower the world in the right way you, we have sure ma'am thank you Yes, we have many people who have negative thoughts and negative uh, beliefs, you know, about different kind of people around them. They have this fear of xenophobia, fear of foreigners and all of that. So when we connect with different people from different countries, we get to know their mindset. We get to know the way they think. We all are human in the end, right? We mm, all exactly. are, you know, belonging to one main race called as humanity. And mm. humanity is the greatest religion Agreed. and love the universe. Agreed. 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 Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very, very much. Stay Thank blessed. You Thank, you. Thank you. Take care. Take care. We love you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My dear friends, uh, with this to share this video, it has a right message for each one of us. Spread the message of love, peace, and justice across the world. We had our celebrity joining us all the way from Peshawar, Pakistan, who shared on humanity, justice, peace and resilience don't forget to like subscribe share and comment to the international fab talks if you think we are doing the right thing by connecting with the different people across the world getting to know their thoughts getting to know the hardships and the work that they do and how they are influencing one another across the world stay blessed and stay safe don't forget to love yourself and keep smiling